This is a video response to DPR Jones on his temporary channel with regard to the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment and the double slit experiment. If I may leave the cat aside, I'd prefer to address the double slit experiment. The cat is just a thought experiment which illustrates the apparent absurdity of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics, an absurdity which is inherent in quantum physics. Quantum physics doesn't make a lot of sense at the best of times, and things are under no obligation to behave as we like to think they should. But anyway. To summarise, you ask why is it that when we fire a single photon at a double slit, it shows interference wave properties, but when we look, that is, humans look to see which slit it goes through, it displays particle properties. What breaks down the wave function? The short answer is that we don't know. It is not human observation, however. It would be worth thinking about what is the difference between the two experimental setups, the one with the detector, the, the monitor, and the one without the detector. A good guess would be that the detector makes the difference. So what difference can a detector make? Well, here's a quick thought experiment. You could even do it for real, but I'm sure you'll get the point. If you stood in a doorway, um, turn off all the lights, uh, and stand in a doorway which opens onto a corridor and someone is shining a flashlight from one end of the corridor to another, then discounting things like dust particles in the air and random reflections and so on, you have no way to know whether or not the flashlight is on or off. The only way you can find out is by putting your hand out or a piece of paper or whatever, and if there is a beam of light, it is now no longer reaching the end of the corridor because it's hitting your hand. So, Back, back to double slits. Let's try scaling the experiment up so that we see where we get the idea that it should make more sense than it does. If we take a machine gun, such as this one from the famous game of Doom, and fire it through a single slit, we get the expected single stack of bullets on the back plate. If we fire it through a double slit, we get two stacks of bullets. We surmise that a bullet which passes through the top slit adds to the top pile, and the bottom slit adds to the bottom pile, but we could easily put a detector there to make sure of this. A suitable detector of speeding bullets could be Venomfang X's testicles. So, if we fire a single bullet from the gun and it passes through the slit where our detector is not, we see it arriving at the back plate. And if it passes through the slit where our detector is, we get the expected reaction and we know that our assumption about which slit it passed through is correct. On the subatomic scale, however, detection is not so easy. Since the breakdown of the wave function occurs when a detector is involved, we can suspect that detection methods cause the collapse. The problem is that there is no way to detect the photon, or whatever particle is under scrutiny, without affecting what it does. With the machine gun, we could spare Venomfang X's testicles. I don't see any reason why we should, as this is probably the single most useful contribution he has made to science so far, but anyway, we could detect the bullets by placing a light source between the two slits that shines in one direction towards the detector, and each bullet that passes through that slit breaks the light beam and the detector registers this. The bullets will then carry on to hit the back plate as normal. We can fire single bullets and see whether the bullet passed through the one slit, or we can fire a stream and count the bullets. This is the kind of thing we have to do with photons, alpha particles, or anything else we wish to examine in a, du in a double slit experiment. Using a detector like this, we have to use a light with a very short wavelength, deep ultraviolet, as any wavelength longer would miss the thing we're trying to illuminate. But this kind of light is very high energy, and as soon as it illuminates a particle, it imparts that energy and changes what the particle does. Thus, the act of observation affects the outcome of the experiment. But it is not human observation, it's just the method that we have to use to make any observation. This, of course, does not explain why there is particle-wave duality in the first place. We have to think in terms not of particles or waves, but of a superposition of probabilities. If it is equally probable that a photon goes through one slit as another, then we will see an interference pattern. This is not meant to be a 
comprehensive or full answer to your question. I hope that it has given you a little more information about the nature of the problem that uh, that we're addressing here. Thank you for listening. Cheers.